filthy, evil joke, ADL. A little bit late coming into the studio. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I decided to treat myself to a cup of coffee, something I don't really do anymore because I just take super male vitality. It gives me all the energy I need, but I just love the taste of a hot, hot cup of Joe, especially, just put a plug in, I didn't mean to, uh, for the great southern Mexico high mountain organic volcanic soil that they grow these great Arabica beans in, available in Wake Up America Coffee, and then idiots go, why are you selling coffee not grown in the United States? Because the good coffee's grown in Guatemala and Mexico, that's why. And because I support the farmers down there having jobs on their own land, not coming up here and becoming Democratic Party voters. So I try to put my money where my mouth is, and the Chiapas rebels have actually defeated the Mexican government for 15 years running. And even though they're leftist, they're at least pro-gun and have taken their areas back. So I am supporting because they got good coffee, and you can buy it at InfoWarsStore.com. But I didn't mean to do a plug. Let's go to Robert, Louisiana. You're on the air. I want to hear your story. Go ahead. Alex, yes, sir. Uh, I own a small bar in Alexandria, Louisiana. I have a customer that bought a condo that was right around the corner. So me and another customer jumped in the car to leave. We were immediately pulled over by seven police officers. We were pulled out the car, separated. He was given a DWI test. He passed. The car was ransacked three or four times. There was no drugs. After all this was gone, it's still separated. Female cop was called to the scene. Female cop comes rubber gloves, further violates the female customer. Still nothing. I said, this is kind of excessive. He looks to me and says, I'm six foot two. I am kind of aggressive sometimes, but he, he goes, so what are you going to tell us how to do our job? Or do you pay taxes? No, you don't pay taxes. I said, yes, I pay taxes. He goes, okay, you're just telling us how to do our job. I said, well, sir, it looks like you're really, really working hard. He goes, you're f he just looked at me and goes, I don't believe a fucking word you say. Horrible, aggressive, search the guy again. Sir, him. sir, I want to hear your story, but you can't, you can't cuss on there. I'm going to let you go. <sighs> yes, they've militarized the police. They've got them out there revenue generating. The criminal elements of the government and the big banks are on record. It's not disputable now. Shipping in the majority of the narcotics. I'm against the drug war. I'm against militarizing police. I'm against uh, all of this, and, I, and we try to reform it, and I absolutely get that the Constitution is being trampled by many police departments. Historically, I've noticed we've gotten a lot bigger changes when we take control of our counties, our cities, through elections, when we support good cops, and when we expose bad cops. I wanted to hear where you were going, but you cussed. We had to let you go. Because then we delay you out, and then you could cuss again, and then it would go out, and then we got an FCC violation. So many shows are internet only, they don't understand that we're on a whole bunch of AM and FM stations. We can't have cussing, folks. So if you want to be hung up on, go ahead and cuss. I'll let you go. Um, but the police are going to get more aggressive with everybody because so many cops are getting shot. And long before there was this epidemic of cops getting shot, I told you I got pulled over when I was a senior in high school. About 5 o'clock in the afternoon, my mom said, go get me some frozen yogurt. I drove like two miles down the road, driving home. Probably going five miles over the speed limit. He pulls, he tur I turn on my street, my parents' street. He pulls in behind me. I had a weight belt sitting in the front of the seat. I've been lifting weights. And he's like, all right, license registration, run! Starts cussing, puts the gun to my head. Talk about quick draw. I mean... But then he apologized, said it looked like a big knife or gun scabbard, and let me off the ticket. But the point is, he could have blown my head off. And it was because he was so jumpy. And I was white, he was white. Larry Nichols joins us. He's just recently had surgery. He's battling cancer. We should all pray for him. I've received some criticism for having Larry Nichols on, even though I've been interviewing him for 20 years. Uh, I've been battling the Clintons and their corruption and putting up with their attacks and censorship uh, ever since. I was physically attacked one time in a parking lot by organized hired thugs and told to back off the Clintons, back off Waco, back off the judge, because I was holding demonstrations and covering the fact that they'd been found not guilty 
of the general crimes of murder, but then found guilty of using guns in the commission of murder. How is it they were still being held in prison? And so for that, the media claimed I was a Davidian, uh, even though I was just trying to get justice, and then they sent people to beat me up. So that's how authoritative the Clintons are, and that's how serious their intimidation is. But Larry Nichols was a fixer for him. He was a politico that worked for him, high level, uh, along with other top names early in the Clinton operation. Uh, if you don't know the story, his dad was dying of cancer. He just had a Saul of Tarsus moment on the road to Damascus when he just said, I can't end up being involved in Clinton murders and basically stuff he knew that was probably going on and drug dealing, cocaine drug dealing. And it's all come out from Mina, not just from him, but from Terry Reed and countless others, the narcotics being flown in there by the ton every few days. And so he lost basically everything he had uh, when he was Clinton's big buddy because he said he wouldn't go along with it. He spearheaded the Clinton Chronicles part one and two. But a lot of people around those films ended up dying. So I see him as the prodigal son. He went out, he did bad things. And then he didn't turn around once he got in trouble and said, I want to be good. He turned around while he was rich and powerful and about to be inside the White House. Riding that gravy train that so many other Clintonistas have ridden. I mean, the Clintons have ridden their fame to 500 plus million dollars between the two of them conservatively and billions in their foundation. And we we may be seeing the fall of Hillary Clinton right now because the heat is coming out so serious. And it was Nichols months ago that said he believes it's Obama trying to shut her down so he can set up the new dynasty and be in control and line up his people. Because people are sick of the Clintons, even bad people are sick of them, because they have been running the show for a very, very long time. But I don't know what's worse, the Clintons or Obama. And it just shows, or Jeb Bush, it just shows how much trouble we're in. Uh, I know the Bushes are bad news, but I just can't imagine. I know this, the Bushes aren't as aggressive on the ground with activists and media. I mean, you've seen Obama arrest more reporters than anybody in the history. I mean, he's worse than Lincoln. And you've seen uh, all the persecution of whistleblowers. Um, that's the Clinton's hand with Obama. The Bushes don't do that as bad. I mean, I've lived under both regimes. And I'm not saying I want the Bushes in there. I want Rand Paul or I'd take a Donald Trump. Uh, I mean, anything but these dynasties. But Larry Nichols, you know, some people criticized me and they said, what are you doing having a guy that some people say was, you know, he's admittedly Dixie Mafia, high level, uh, you know, worked in weird special ops in Latin America, probably a hit man, on and on and on. What are you doing having Larry Nichols on your show? Well, he's a consummate Clinton insider, and he lost everything to tell the truth, and I've known him for 20 years. And everything he's talked about has basically come true. So there's credibility there. But even if I thought he was a bad guy, which I don't think he is, I think he's really reprieved himself and reproved himself to a great extent. He has courage. And, you know, there's the quote from Full Metal Jacket written by Stanley Kubrick where he says, where the Marine Corps sergeant, the drill sergeant says, Private Joker's silly and he's ignorant, but he's got guts and guts is enough. Well, you know what? Larry Nichols isn't silly and ignorant and he's got guts on top of it. And he knows how dangerous what he's He's been shot at. He's been attacked. I mean, they've sent his thugs, Clinton's thugs, to break people's kneecaps that even talked to Jennifer Flowers. I've interviewed the women Clinton would rape, all the people they've killed. And so that's why we sent the crew up to interview Larry Nichols. And it came out like something that looks better than Vice Television on HBO. I mean, Josh Owens and Jakari Jackson really did a great job interviewing him. Mr. Nichols did a great job, even though I know he's in, not in good health giving us the time over a couple of days to do the interview. Uh, and we're going to be premiering that somewhere here on the radio slash TV show in the next few weeks. But I just think it's important that you hear from somebody who was right there in the middle of it. Now, before I go any further, uh, I said, what do you want to cover first? He goes, I want to cover the MI6 spy found dead in a bag in a bathtub who had hacked the Clinton data. And that's the Daily Mail one and Telegraph's also reporting it. It's not in U.S. news. Breitbart and a few others have carried it. 
what was it, two and a half years ago, David Knight did a report on this when it first happened. And it's going to be in the fourth hour today. We're bringing the fourth hour back. That's going to be a roundup with our reporters and anchors and special guests. We're going to have um, Rob Dew hosting and, and you know, uh, being the main um, anchor. And then we're going to have a commentary analysis and news on this subject and others, Jakari Jackson and Joe Biggs. Tomorrow it's going to be Leanne McAdoo, uh, and it's going to be Rob Dew again. And I think myself, I'll probably ride shotgun along with that as well. And when David Knight comes back, he'll be hosting that fourth hour, probably two or three days a week uh, with the uh, guest anchors uh, as well. But we're going to play that special report that Knight did a few years ago in context to this. But when you read the article, the local police get there and say he's clearly been murdered. And you can read the articles. When MI6 gets there, who he worked for, they say, no, uh, it's normal to zip yourself up in a duffel bag from the inside out. Well, the only time I've seen something stupider, uh, and now an inquest has found there was foul play, was when people would get their arms, legs, and head cut off and be in a plastic bag at a trash dump. You don't cut your arms and legs and head off, and then it's like saying you could cut yourself up and put yourself in a bottle, like a ship in the bottle. It, it's, it's just upside down, 2 plus 2 equals 100, total malarkey bull. But this is an illustration of him hacking in. We have the Clinton chef now dead. Nobody likes to kill people like the Clintons. Or, as Larry Nichols says, they don't do it. People around them get the job done. And that's how Lacosa Nostra would do it. I think it's time for our friends over there. I think it's time for him to go on a vacation. And then you know what happens. But the Clintons really enjoy killing. They, Clinton enjoys getting a woman in a cloakroom with people right outside and biting them like a pit bull, biting her lip till blood drips, and then raping them. Uh, I mean, these are a savage, demonic group of people. Uh, and I don't personally even hate them. It's just I know they hate us. They hate freedom. And this dovetails with this. I don't want to go over other news with Larry Nichols and continue with phone calls um, with Mike in Oregon, another Mike in Oregon, Peter in Washington. Josh in Tennessee, Doug in Minnesota, they're on subjects all over the map. The White House trying to get this cop killing spree going. What's behind that? Larry Nichols, thank you so much for coming on with us. Hey, thank you, Alex. I didn't know you could do my voice. I didn't know I had a distinctive voice. <laughs> well, I got a raspy voice, too, but nothing like yours. I'm sure I'll get like <laughs> yours, though. Well, let me say, Alex, it's, uh, I know you take heat for having me on. I, I know that. I, but, you know, heck, I don't know what else to do. You take pound for pound the things that I have said for the years you and I have known each other. And then tell me any other, you know, it's amazing. Things I tell you, they come true. It happens. Well, the Clintons come out with their side of it. The media jumps on their side of it, attacks me and you for being around me. And then theirs ends up being a lie. But after all these years, here's Hillary running for president again. And, uh, you know, I'm still in that corner of people getting on to you for having me on. Oh, well, it's a very small to... minority of people. I, I mean, I wanted to talk about why I admire your courage and what you've done and, and, and explain that because I think it's an important point. We expect to get heat being in the kitchen, but it, it, it's actually very mild. I would expect uh, more I mean, people should really get it. Well, your last interview, you know, got hundreds of thousands of views on YouTube, just as a gauge, millions here, uh, and each derivative of it got hundreds of thousands. So over a million people on YouTube watched the last one. Let's let's cover this subject as we go to break, and I'll come back and try to shut up and give you the floor. You talked about maybe Obama might be the last president. Since then, he made a statement about running for a third term, wishing he could. F talk about that more. Well, the thing that everybody had better watch Obama knows what I know. There's only two people in this world that can stop him from his agenda, which is to dedicate and make himself king using the FEMA provisional government. And Alex, you've covered FEMA for years, so don't let anybody fool you. It's out there. They're waiting to do it. But Obama wants to be that person. And there's only two people that can stop him, Bill and Hillary Clinton, that have the power to match him. The key to this is watch Joe Biden. 
If Joe Biden gets in the race, 